How's it? Ball. Um, what do you normally do at the studio? I am the office assistant. What's that entail? Answering the phones, um, receiving packages, maintaining the kitchen, drop off mail to everybody. Uh, send out invites when we have company meetings or if we have um, employees who are going to be potential employees come in and be hired. So yeah, that's what I do. Personally, um, I drop pretty much every night, every day. I'm on the train to come to work pretty much an hour every morning, an hour every evening. In the dream world, where everyone gets what they want, I would get to write and illustrate my own comics and live happily off of that. <laughs> Is this the first time you get to participate in the music? Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yesterday I just did some of the dream scene mock-up still and I finished that up and I, I don't think there's anything for me right now which is kind of good because Ops has a lot going on but if that changes let me know Levi. Black Ops? No, Operations. <laughs> For me. For my, <laughs> straight. My Allison own. Navy SEAL. That's me. <laughs> Secretly kicking all the butts. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, that's where I'm at. Cool. Okay. I was really excited when they were like, yeah, you're, when Levi came running over and was like, clapped his hands on my shoulder from behind and was like, you're on my team. And that's so crazy to see something I drew in a game. <laughs> but it's gonna be kind of painful to go back to operations work and not get to draw at work anymore. That'll be the only downside, I guess. <laughs> I've been waking up early, man. I've been waking up early and then I just start thinking about the game and I cannot go back to sleep. Like six in the morning and then I think, how am I gonna make a game about dreams if I'm not dreaming? <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah, I think we're all tired, yeah. It's amnesia fortnight. <laughs> well, I mean, we're gonna try to get it as polished as much as possible. We still have Technically this weekend, I mean, I'll be in like probably Sunday, and then we have like Monday and Tuesday to do hopefully a little bit more polish, but uh, I'm hoping we can at least make it close to what Levi has in mind based on his like you know, concept art and sketches. I mean, if you can just kind of give that impression idea. Maybe if somebody plays this game and they feel like, oh, this is like, you know, pretty crazy haunted forest, I'm like surrounded by all these interesting spooky shapes and I, you know, uh, I think I've done my job. You know, if they feel like they're really in the forest, uh, I think that's a big win. So I was, I just saw this on like Duncan's screen where it's only um, displaying like the albedo. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I like it blew my mind because I was like, oh wow, I didn't even realize all that texture work went in. Um, and it like really matches like Levi's concept art style. Um, and I feel like we were talking about how the way the current lighting um, is set up in the default game, it kind of like washes all that out and it kind of makes it look more like, you know, like CG video game instead of like this sort of illustrative look and all that. So we're trying to bring in more texture detail to just uh, instead like apply an overall uh, color correction on the entire screen. Just bumping that stuff. Oh, I see. You're like, like collapsing. You're clamping yeah, the range. Yeah. And you just get a vividness. Um, so if I wanted to like pretend that this was like the outside area, I would like bathe it in moonlight like this. And it's not really moonlight until you take your color balance and mid-tone shift into blues. Do the whole game as like white light coming from our actual... Yeah, and then just like do it all in post. Yeah. yeah. It's like Gears of War. Um, we're making Gears of War. <laughs> Except for we're not, yeah, there's much. one stage that we're not doing, and that's the like, hue saturation down, down all the way. And then, like, Gears of War. Making it browner. There you go. <laughs> Actually, whoa. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I kind of wanted to have as much done as possible today, uh, but I'm going to keep working on it through the weekend uh, to get it all set up. I think we're still in pretty good shape to have a very playable version of the game on Monday so that we can sit the whole team in front of it and figure out what our polish list is for the rest of the milestone. Awesome. Uh, check out this. This is the princess's uh, chambers. It's coming along pretty sweet, I think. And then Raz just got his world tree done. Uh, it's not actually implemented in the game yet, but he's got the art done for it. And it's looking pretty rad. Are you doing the world tree right now? Yeah, this is the world tree. 
it just looks like a regular tree. <laughs> I was like, there's no time, right? There's like, there's no time. I'm like, I'm just gonna draw a faint, just a regular tree and hopefully like make it like Zelda-y or, or something after a while. Yeah, 10 by 10 tile. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Yeah, <laughs> I wish it could look better. Uh, I had like, in the very beginning, I was like, you know, like as an artist, you're like, oh, wicked. Like it's gonna look awesome. Uh, you get all these like visions in your head. And like the very first two days, I was like, yeah, th I'm gonna make this happen. And then like the third day, I was like, no, it's not gonna happen, dude. So like, I kind of like accepted that. And like, I'm just like, just get it done as fast as you can, basically. Uh, the thing is, it's like, uh, uh, the Zelda like style, like the tile style is like tried and true. And uh, breaking that mold is like, you're gonna have to like experiment. And like, there's no time to experiment that, that stuff. So it's like, uh, just, yeah, so like, the, the very first few days I was like trying to experiment, and it was like, it's not working out. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. The camera's totally catching my non-enthusiasm. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, like it, I think you can see. That's it, a trend that I know with really good artists, or notice with really good artists, is that they're often very critical of their own work. But um, I don't know. I think that's I don't know. Maybe that you need that to be good. <laughs> uh, and Raz is fucking awesome. So like, uh, it, I think that I mean the, the stuff I think is is really strong. Like I wish I had Zelda games uh, to play like this when I was a kid. Dude, that's perfect. That's yeah. such a cool tree. Uh, it's gonna look awesome in the game. Yeah. 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 And then we'll just yeah. sit this so, stuff over top of it, and the players can like walk over the roots. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll alpha out all this stuff here. I'll put like some more tree. like uh, glowy things up in here too. Cool. So that'd be cool. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> then I'll like work on the interior. I think. No, I think that's totally awesome. Like in a full version of this game, like if, especially if you have little glowy bits up there, we should have little birds that come and get high drinking the world juice. Oh, dude, that'd be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> They'd be all like falling down. Like, right? <laughs> have you ever seen footage of like birds drinking like uh, um, like fermented grapes, like grapes no. that have just like rotted on the vine and become no. alcoholic? Yeah, it's totally funny. I like, think I'm going to be watching uh, going on YouTube after you leave. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, no, I think that's I think that's great. I'll come bug you for like the interior stuff. Yeah, this is a great direction. Like uh, th these little glowy bits. Are, this is totally what I was talking about in terms yeah. of like that blend of like sort of natural and, and sort of like fantasy hackery. Like, like as far as like the, the door, I'm just gonna make like a dark Halloween sure. thing. Yeah, I think it's just down. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Cool. Dude. Awesome. Yeah, thanks, man. Oh, thank you. Yeah. No, I'd love. I'd like to see it finished up. You know and seeing how it plays out. There's always like that, that part of me that like loves seeing my art in a game, you know? And seeing like, oh man, there it is, you know? And what do people think of it, you know? And stuff like that. It, it, it's cool. Goddamn work this game. Yeah. <sighs> well, this is a pre built base layout. Um, so, this is just like one of your starting things. Um, and I just, we built a, a mode for the game that lets us. Uh, that lets us just build things like new ships that are going to show up, uh, and even asteroids. Actually, I think you can see here uh, somebody made a <laughs> somebody made a Mario shaped asteroid. Um, and yeah, you can see there's like these things floating off in space. I think this is just a giant derelict ship, um, and that's either an asteroid or another ship. So you'll see the outlines of these things floating off in the void. Um, so yeah, these blue squares here. That that was something that came in. I forget like either night before last or today, um, where the citizens all build stuff now. So these people are going to show up here and they're going to start building. And these, yeah, so you mark out new construction with the build tool here mm -hmm. and that, you know, that, that creates it as something that the citizens should go and build. Um, but then it's up to them to actually get there and do that for you. Yeah, I meant to inspect. That's another cool thing that's working now, is that you can click on all of these little people 
and see and see their names and see their stats and see their space face updates, um, which are just generated by you know people that they talk to and you know things that are happening and the usual like random inane observations. I think uh, definitely you know if you look at somebody and wonder why they're doing what they're doing, you know it could be a bug or it could be uh, something interesting. Um, yeah, mostly right now I'm seeing bugs, but I think that's kind of true of any game that you're working on. You, you can only see you can only see the dumb stuff. So I went around and talked to most people today about the remaining work still to be done. It was sort of an interesting experience, like talking to uh, all the different people, just because people do have very different takes on what is the most important thing to, to do. There's like a lot of things that are gonna interconnect. We definitely need a way for citizens, for bad things to happen to citizens, because right now life just carries on happy as can be, and uh, we need some bad stuff to happen, uh, because, you know, um, I was talking with Anna about uh, something really cool where, you know, morale doesn't really have an effect right now, and we always intended it for it to, um, and so maybe when morale gets low, citizens might murder each other mm -hmm. if they're just pushed to the limit and they snap. Because we have, we'll hopefully have the idea of morale actually affecting you so severely that you yeah. end up killing people. Right. So I think that just comes that comes okay, with so, like testing. So it sounds like there would be like a health plague, but also a morale plague. Like some plagues would just reduce yeah. your health, and then you would die. You would you would die if you didn't make it to an yeah. infirmary in time. Yeah. And then other plagues would make your morale go down mysteriously. Yeah. And to a player, they wouldn't necessarily notice that. Yeah. They would just say, "Gee, why is this person? Why is this person's morale so low?" And then they would kill. And that's a natural. That's actually what I think should be the natural reaction of anybody whose morale drops to, to below a certain point. Yeah. Like if their morale is that low, they'll actually do a murder roll every time that they right. socialize with somebody. Yeah. So, so there's like a natural, like you know, so, some so, sometimes murder will just happen, and yep. you have no idea why, and like you have to yep. look through the logs. Yeah. And you have to decide if it was an isolated incident or part of a plague, a plague of space madness. You kind of want everything to matter. Mm -hmm. That's what's been weird about this, you know, is that like, you know, some of the games that I admire most, like, you know, Team Ico's games and stuff, like they're very much these products of subtractive design where they might have started with a big vision, mm -hmm. but then they just kept paring down and paring down until they had something that was left that they could, that they were sure they could actually, they could, they could absolutely do a really good job of, and also that it all fed into the same kind of meaning and story and vibe and all that. Um, whereas this, very from the very start, has been like an everything, a big bowl of everything, and I think that's part of the promise that attracted people to it. But that also makes it really difficult, you know, as developers, because even though you know you can be very focused about something or have a clear idea of what you want to get, but everything is interconnected. Like that's that's the difficulty of doing a systems-driven game is that everything is kind of connected to everything else. And so, you know, you just end up saying like, well, this is important because if we don't do this, then this is, you know, it's all this, it's, it's all, everything exists in this web of connected values. Mm -hmm. So we got murder with, if you have low morale, contagion, which spreads and can either lower your health or, or your morale, and then bed ownership and then firefighting. Okay, cool. Pretty much every discussion ends up generating like some ideas that are like, that'd be cool. I don't know if we can, yeah, we probably can't do that at, within this time. But it's like, you know, put it on the shelf and I don't know if we ever end up doing something with this, then we can, we can take a, that and probably a billion more, you know, things and just, yeah, try them out, so. Yeah. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah. Real quick history. Yesterday, there was a lot of um, beating the world into submission, Tony Danza style. Um, so it's, uh, I think we fixed some of the big issues with the nav mesh, some of the collision stuff. There was some other crazy stuff that's not worth going into. It was hours of unfun work. But I, just, I, it's, I turned it's, the nav mesh display on, and it looked like everything was just yeah. like... Beautiful. It so looks, I think, yeah. I think we've nailed it, so. Alright, and uh, I also sent a list this morning of what I believe to be the player facing, like, uh, priority order that I think we should be tackling things, so a lot of those are some of our key systems we're finishing up, and the game loop, and some of the UI, and some of the effects as it relates to the player understanding what's going on in the world. So, um, if you haven't read them yet, take, take a read, and we can discuss them in any more detail. I'd like to hit um, those things first. Um, 
and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Yeah, I mean, I, like it should be the first. You'd be like, what's going on? No, no, it's it's that you know, but you learn it over time. Yeah, it's not that obscure. Once you, there's consistent symbols here. You know, so we weren't planning to tutorialize this. I mean, tutorialize it, but tell them what these icons are. I guess no, no. All right, yeah, that's cool. I, I think even if we really wanted to do that, yeah. I don't think we have time. Yeah, yeah. And if you compare something like this to, say, the Minecraft learning curve, this is nothing, right? People went crazy for that. So I, I think there's there's a weird thing where it's like the type of player who's really gonna get into this game to that to the pro because you don't have to set that stuff. You can build robots without doing that, mm -hmm. right? And you can just look for cool parts and based on what they're doing, right? But the player who's really gonna get into that, I think. Like, although it's initially a little agitating, there's going to be, I, I'm hoping, we balance it right, there's this cool, like, exploration, learning, mastery curve with that stuff. That's the, that's the goal. Because everything on the console world is so over-tutorialized and yeah. spoon-fed. And I think, really, like, the it focus makes of a game that's got some level of programming with a first-person camera on the PC, we're not going after... Yeah, there will be that aha moment where they figure out the language of the robots, which is pretty cool. It's like the dig, that game, the dig. So yeah, as long as once wow. they figure it out, it's consistent. Nice, got the dig <laughs> yeah, reference good. in there. Thanks, thanks. Well I mean, it, like with all the stuff that we added, has actually been become a pretty sophisticated UI. We actually have like the programming interface for the robots that I've just finished now, and so here's the new interface I've been working on. So. These are all inputs. There's a bump input. We're going to actually make the letters thicker. That's something I have to do next because uh, they're really thin, as you can tell, and you can't really read them. But you have a bump input, damage input, movement input, sound, energy, and idle. And then you can hit OK. This might crash. This crashed just now. We'll see. This is a test. And it crashed. Oh my god. It didn't work. Uh, so I don't think so. Uh, I'm gonna. I have, I have a setup where I can work from home. I always feel guilty when people ask me that. Um, I'm one of these game programmers. I'm an old game programmer, and I have a wife and kids. And weekends um, have become very, very, very important to them. So like back in the day, like of course I'd be here. I'd be here all weekend. I'd be eating Chinese food and staying overnight. But now. We have birthday parties, and uh, I think we have like a, I think we have t I think we have two birthday parties and two holiday parties this weekend, and my kid has piano lessons and ballet lessons and stuff, which is great. I love all that stuff, but it definitely is just like, it it basically really uh, defines what hours I'm available. But the great news is Lee is also an old guy, as you said. This is actually a really old team. Patrick, who's been here for. Four and a half years at least is is the most rookie double finder on the team. Everybody else has been here for five years or longer. But um, I think we're in pretty good shape. Like I don't, I'd be surprised if people if people were were really slaving away this weekend um, and trying to get all of that all that last minute stuff done. And there's a lot of people who, you know, that's that's what they this is the this is the thing that they want to do most. And this is the thing. I mean, outs outside of all of the stuff that I get to do with my family, which is all great, this is definitely the thing that I love to do most. And this is like, making games is, is, is an honor. It's, great. it's amazing that I get to do it and get paid for it. But this especially, this whole concept, is so much fun. Because like, you, I mean, it's just like the best. I mean, it's, the, it's just like the first part of making a game is the most fun. Like, finishing a game, it sucks. Like, finishing a game, like, Fixing bugs that only happen one out of a hundred times, and fixing cert bugs like passing TCRs for Microsoft. I mean, Microsoft's great; they have great games. They need those TCRs, but it sucks. Like doing this stuff is awesome. Like watching the robots run around and like shoot each other and like do stuff, and you make one change over one day, and it, the whole game looks different. That stuff's awesome. Um, so yeah, so this is the most fun I get to have at my job, and. Um, and that's why you have these guys working 80 hours a week, but like running around with big smiles on their faces. Um, but yeah, I'd be in here if I could be in here. But oh well, birthday parties, holiday parties, kids, bedtimes, bath times, stuff like that. That's uh, that's got to take precedence for me. So. Hey, how's it going? Video games. Yeah, Friday. Yay, Friday! Oh, oh my God, it's Friday. <laughs> Yeah, how's everybody doing? There's been a lot of stuff happening over the last few days. It's really coming together. 
you're all hanging in there. So I'm going to continue on path and camera stuff today. Um, I want to sit down with you, Dave, and go over one last time the changes I made last night to the, to the path. And then we can start talking about bonus path stuff a little bit more. I just want to say thank you to everybody for working so hard over the last week and a half. It really, I really appreciate it. It really means a lot to me that you've worked as hard as you have and so much stuff has come in over the last few days. This just looked really good. I just wanted to say thanks and, you know, let's keep rocking. There's only a few days left and we'll push this thing out. I'm sure it'd be awesome. So let's go. Cool. Thanks, everybody. Silver. The only thing, the reason that this edit doesn't work is because we have a downward facing shot and it cuts to a downward facing shot of the same distance. It's like basically this distance and that distance, the, sh the camera angle that I have are the same. Dave animated this sequence when you're on that bridge from one angle. So we've got, if we don't do something, we've got a hard cut, like a hard 180 cut, no matter what we do, which is what we were just talking about. Um, so the angle that we would be at right now is like something like this, which is okay, but if I were to go this way, see it cuts to the other side and you don't actually know that that happened. Um, so that's what we're trying to smooth out. Yep. Like this is the way I was imagining it when I was doing this cutscene. The, the camera would be following you in a, in a way that you're going this direction. And when you jump that direction, as soon as she lands on the bridge, like on that cutscene cut, it would cut to the to this angle. Yeah. Which is like... It's a, it's a 180. It's a fast no, that's not a 180 because... We're, we're on this side of the camera. The, the camera's on this side of her the entire time. So it's, I mean, it's, it's not still... at all. It's, it goes across and then it, it, like it stays on this side. If, it was, if I went from here to there, then that would be a 180. But it, the, only, like, the reason it doesn't work is because we both like that like downward tower shot. And when you did this area, you put that downward tower shot. And I also had that downward tower shot. I thought that was the way that we were going. And I don't want the, I don't want the path through space to be twisting over back and forth on itself, which is what's going on here. So if it'll fix things to have that high shot from this side of the bridge, then we should just do that. Um, in normal situations, we'd be like kind of storyboarding these sequences out. So like we would know exactly where the gameplay cameras were going to be and exactly where the cutscene cameras are going to be. But since it's Amnesia Fortnite, and everybody's like, kind of like, this is what we want, now go. Uh, I'll be working, like, I was working on a cutscene, like, it, it was like 11.30 when I was doing that cutscene. So, and I was just purring through getting all that stuff done so our programmer can set it up the next day. And then while I was doing that, Andy is setting up in-game cameras as you're walking up to the cutscene. And so we're both, and the funny thing, I thought it was funny because he had this shot where it's like pointing down, like almost, he had like pretty much the same shot that I had, only it was reversed because he was coming from this direction, whereas I was coming up to the bridge from this direction. So we both liked this like awesome shooting down the tunnel shot. But the problem is, is that like going between the two, like when you have two shots that are the same and you need to move the camera, it looks weird. So. We had this like, uh, where you need to figure out which camera angle we're going to uh, like use. Are we going to use the cutscene one or the one that we have in the end game? Um, part of the, the, the one of the tough things is that we have these animated cutscene sequences, so it's kind of hard to change those because there's all these cutscenes that are involved with it. So if there's kind of a camera angle, then that's pretty much that's in one of those cutscenes. That's pretty much the cutscene camera that we're gonna have to stick with unless we really want to move it. I honestly like whether we like figure out how to change this and like go to the other one it's like it's all it's gonna end up looking good either way. It's just a matter of like which one we, we can move this one whereas the cutscene ones are uh, gonna be more of a beast. So the other thing which is not gonna be popular I'm gonna suggest it anyway is the uh, the close-up. Uh, um, I'm not a huge fan of that close-up yeah. anyway. Well, we cut that, but we could just use that camera. Yeah, yeah, sort of. I mean, she still is going to be like facing the other direction. Like if we were coming on the left, like, you know, where she survives the thing, she's still going to be getting up back to the camera. Like we need to get that camera on the other side for, the, for that sequence. Um, 
and then we can tweak it once it's in there, probably, Andy. And just figure out figure out what will work. Yeah. I need to see how it feels. It's playable, right? So I don't like it when my controls are flipping around 180 exactly. degree from jump to jump. So I, I want that path to feel smooth, yeah. and not completely flipping around. Yeah, for sure. So I'll check that camera in and we'll try and move it around and see if we can smooth it out. Yeah. Sweet. Right. Nice Ben. Ah. There is a happy medium somewhere. You just have to noodle around and find it. Like this game is just These guys are so emotionally riveting to they're, me. They're insane. I remember well when, when when I first played this, it was we were like I was working on probably, I can't remember what year it was, but I was working at a company called Nihilistic and with two really close friends of mine. And like this game came out and we were just like, <laughs> well, we just have to blow up everything that we've done and start all over. Like, this is amazing. Like the animation in it was like, we're all animators and like we were really young. So we were real animator nerd, like really get into like what makes something like just really get into animation in video games and then this game came out and it was like the bar was like totally raised of quality of animation in a video game. Well I mean like this is the shit that really blew me blew my mind when this game came out like you didn't know. the the run speed and like yeah. this was I mean I'm already looking at it and I'm just like what, like why are we still in the stone age why do I suck this is amazing. Well like look at how the camera's acting too right like it's on a wire but uh it's not just on a wire. <laughs> like, it's got smart movement and smart pathing and stuff. We don't have that. Like, the rate at which that camera moved, I would like to see our cameras moving that slow. That was insane. Hey, Chris, hey, Chris Remo. What's going on here? We are doing some... Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I walk in on your well, yeah. that's all right, Chris. I'm sorry. You can always walk in on me. TV's Chris no Remo is always I'm welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to play through it and then play Shadow of the Colossus tonight, and then we'll have no game for the backers. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. Uh, we won't have no game. Like, <laughs> yeah, you'll have what's there right now. <laughs> yeah, it's good enough. God, this game's cool. I love that motion. Mm -hmm. I know, I was looking at that a little while ago and I was like, it's why don't so we have any like shots like that? And here I am falling all over the goddamn place like I'm grandma. I'm coming for you. This camera's busted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were just we just spent like 10 minutes talking about how awesome their cameras are and then you get in a sequence like this where the camera's just in a bad spot. And like you got gimbal locked there for a second. Uh -huh. <laughs> it, like you kind of just spun around. That shit is so awesome. It's so good, that part where she, like, the first, this. Yeah, she's like, no way. <laughs> like, that animation of her, like, it almost looks like she wants to get off, but, like. I think there are, like, a lot of different things that different people are drawn to in this game. Whoa. Like it had really good puzzles, but then it mm -hmm. had really good, um, like atmospherics. But then it yeah. had really good, like the the character, like with no with no amount of like, uh, like text, t walls of text trying to explain their relationship. Mm -hmm. You get that like you need to take care of this girl, uh, and that's like and there's all these nice like those little cute moments. Well, I mean, all that you're really saying when it comes down to it is it the the people that made this fucking game are geniuses. <laughs> it's like a, they spent a long time on everything. Andy definitely like he expressed it the stuff that he really like the feeling that he really likes from this game. It's kind of like he he likes the uh, like the ambience of it. The atmosphere. That's stuff. like the atmospheric stuff from it. I think or what drew him the most to it. I mean, like, this game is, like, as close as the video game business has ever gotten to, like, making, like, a Miyazaki movie. Like, something that has, like, a real sense of, like, feeling in it and isn't, like, usually in games when there's a lot of 
when people try to express emotion in games, there's big cutscenes or like there's like you said walls of text. And we all play games because we like to play them, so that never really works out. Like when you watch these big cutscenes, it's like if it's a good story, yeah, you're going to you're going to enjoy that cutscene, but it, it's never going to reach you the same way or the right way because you're playing a game to play a game. And this game really tries to like take all the things that gameplay can do to a player and make you feel the emotions that you get from like, you know, really str like strong storytelling, but just to never let that like never let that let the game like let that take over the gameplay. And there's so much relationship and empathy between these two characters, but there's no cutscenes. It's just all gameplay. It's like it's really just one of those it was one of those games that's just like this is really close to perfect. And it's it shows how difficult that is that like that hasn't been achieved really. It's we've gotten close to it, but you know, in my opinion, there's so many good games, but in my opinion, like, it wasn't as achieved since Shadow of the Colossus. And it wouldn't get, a, no one's gonna achieve it again until The Guardian eventually comes out. I don't or, know, man, Better Live Extreme Beach Volleyball 2 is... <laughs> pretty, pretty, pretty tear-jerking. <laughs> <laughs>